Hello and welcome into the Sora Andrews podcast brought to you by Sora Data. I am Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdino on Sora. Joined as always by Andy Black, goes as Black on Sora. Today, a very special guest. We've got AJ, also A.J. with two T's on Twitter, mistakenly called A.Jot for years <laughs> on different Sora uh, content places. But I believe AJ confirmed to me once that A.J because his name is AJ, is how it's pronounced. So AJ, thank you so much for coming on. Long overdue, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Been watching uh, from a distance for a while. Yeah, it's good to be back. So we were going to talk about the Premier League, because as everyone knows, the Premier League finally is on So Rare. We have been waiting for a long time, and the when prem has finally been answered. You have seemed pretty excited about the Premier League. Is that based on? Is that the case? Uh, just based on the way that you've been, you know, speaking and uh, maybe buying cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like, um, did you, I, I'm assuming that like you always assumed at some point they were going to add the Premier League. I mean, we all kind of did. And yeah. what have you, like, how do you think the, the initial reaction is kind of just of the community as a whole? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, it's been signaled for a while. There's been different leaks on the, even in just regular sports news, et cetera. Um, yeah, so I, I've personally been saving up for that because I knew this this is going to be massive. These are going to be cards where you're going to have the only super rare or one of 10 rares for a couple of game weeks. That could be some alpha. Um, I think they did a really good job. It probably took six months longer than we all wanted it to. We probably all wanted it at the start of the proper season, but uh, the, there's a lot of good things. Like the quality is really there. You remember when they relaunched Liverpool and like <laughs> YNWA to be like, guys, can't even see some of these faces. Like what's going on? I mean, they really did their quality checks this time. The card got like a minor design update. It looks fantastic with like those beveled edges and just real shiny. And of course the big lion logo. Uh, no, I mean, let's dive into it. Cause there's, there's a lot of good stuff there. I really yeah. like that they made them like a special edition or launch edition and they didn't just try to say, all right, well, these are the new 2023, 20, 24 cards because they really technically can't do that or shouldn't do that for because I guess they're 22, 23 cards. Yeah. But I like that they made a launch edition and just, you know, make them pop, make, make them cool. Exactly. Even Liverpool got an update. Yeah, that's nice. I did think that was kind of funny, though, that like they did have new Liverpool cards. And now they're like, oh, here's some launch edition Premier League card. Don't worry, they're they're good. They're good. They're the new ones. That's fine. <laughs> they they must have been in a situation where they knew like, shit, it's gonna be another six months till we get Premier League launched. We got this Liverpool deal. Uh, let's just put those out too, because <laughs> those yeah. are expensive. <laughs> I will say that like, like we knew this was always going to be the case because of how they do like if players transfer or whatnot. But obviously, like the new Liverpool launch edition cards didn't start at like one of a hundred or one of a thousand. Like they just kept the mints going from earlier. So that like, I don't think anybody was like worried that we were going to get more, but the more that I talked to people on the NBA side who like came from top shot, like the whole concept of like defined scarcity is like really interesting to them. And not that I, I didn't think that there was really going to be this possibility that we were going to end up with like more than a hundred Trent Alexander Arnold cards this year, but it's a, like it's nice that they like basically it's, confirmed it with the mints. Yeah, it's a really good point because like I know we're not here to talk about other other NFT sports games, but like you know I looked at Rainmakers and like kind of tried to play that a little bit, and I mean my head hurt from trying to figure out the scarcity situation. There. I was like, wait, so there's one unique, and they were like, yeah, there's one unique, but there might be like seven different versions each season. We'll have like the Thanksgiving unique, and I'm like, that's not a one of one. <laughs> but I guess in the physical card world, that's how they do it, right? I've been trying to learn that as well from a couple of people on Twitter. And they're like, yeah, it's a one of one. That's the only one like that. But there's like a hundred of them this year of different styles. So <laughs> none of us in so rare world, as you point out, really talk about it because we all know right? there's a hundred rares. That's it. But it is really nice as there's a lot of changes and transfers happening that it's like confirmed over and over. It's like, nope, that's it. That's the supply. It's, it's pretty important. That was one of the things that like pushed me away from Top Shot to begin with was like, not to harp on that, but the idea that like, oh yeah, this, we have a certain amount of like this LeBron moment. 
And you're like, oh, okay. Like, well, how many like LeBron moments could you have in a season? They're like, as many as he wants to put up. And you're like, oh, that's not, that's not really the same. not scarcity. (laughs) Yeah. There's the dunk, the behind the back pass, the, um, but, but it's also like the dunk against the wizards and the dunk against the Hornets. And and you're like, oh, all right, this, (laughs) this is not for me. Um, I will say that the, the new design I just really liked because I feel like we're, we've been like begging them to like have more like special edition cards and like, we're not, everybody like likes the idea that they're within the mint count anyway. Like they, they do it. Like that's the, I think that's the thing is that like, we have seen them do it. Like the golden boys. Those were. Mm. Which ones? Golden boy. Yeah. Those were fun. I'm still, Gosh. I think I'm the only person on the platform that thinks those Rising Sun ones are the best. Andy just hates them. But Tier oh, threes, those, man. Tier <laughs> threes. I love those cards. Yeah. <laughs> Not a fan. Like, I get you don't want to do too many because then it's like, then they're all kind of, they, they don't become as special. But yeah, the new the new versions of these cards are are fun. And I was asking somebody the other day, like if if they thought that they'll do this launch edition for like, every new club that like comes on but like i don't think it matters anymore like they're you're not going to get a club that they're adding that is now better than the premier league and so if they do <laughs> yeah. kind of it's kind of weird that they end up with something like that with like oh we, yeah. yeah we do launch edition cards and you're like oh well this one just launched and they're like ah well, nobody cares about that team anymore but also <laughs> welcome to so rare <laughs> No, it's perfect because, like, there is a slight disappointment that you're only getting it for half the season. So, like, you know, who knows how many they're going to print. And then, obviously, they'll do the 23, 24, August, September time frame. So, it's like, hey, okay, at least if you buy now, you got that cool little logo on the bottom. How many do you think they get through of the mint? I mean, the way they talked about it with baseball, right, how they also launched in the middle of the season. They were like, yeah, we're going to do maximum half because we're halfway through the season. So... I think that would be good. And then I think they've done a really good job in the last, I don't know, three to six months of really monitoring the economy and saying like, hey, we're only going to put out as many as it makes sense. Like, why are we going to put too many and crush everyone's prices? There's no one there to even buy it. And we're not going to do too few that people are pissed that they can't buy one. So I I remember, I think my first year on the platform, they minted a hundred Simon Mignolets uh, and Bodars and they did get to 100 mint on, a, I think there was like three or four cards, but they get, definitely got to 90 plus on on a lot of them. And I think, Laird, you mentioned today in chat that uh, Gil is only up to like mint 40 or 50 or something. What is it? Yeah, the, last year, the latest year, 50, 52, 58, somewhere around there. Yeah, so they're definitely, like, like you said, pulling some strings there and and monitoring supply. I mean, they've added all these leagues. They don't have to mint. 100 gills yeah it saves it's safe if they hold back now and properly sort of keep the economy in a good place then when demand does pick up they don't instantly have to create a tier below limited because they're like oh shit now we need a whole new scarcity Mm -hmm. it's like no we'll just print all the rares this year yeah i don't even remember where i was talking about it but but the biggest thing that i think that also like shocks not to like go back to all the people who came from top shot but like they see the defined scarcity and they're like, that's really not that many, but like there so few players actually get to the full mint anyway. And so like, they're actually even scarcer than, than they say that they could be. Um, AJ, you, how, you have like, rare, Oh, I was gonna say how many rare cards on the platform have a 100 mint? Well, it's probably like 10 or less, right? Yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up, though, because we have seen cards that are, or at least one, that's like 100, the golden, 100. The golden auction one. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, AJ, I've talked to Jimmer about this because it drives him crazy. But, like, does the serial number on the card matter to you in terms of mint date as well? Meaning, like, oh. we've seen some where, like, the first card, at least auction, is, like, the two of a hundred and they'll like save the one for a little bit. Like, what is that? Well, Where do you a- stand? AJ on? mentioned, and I saw, on, I saw on Twitter, AJ mentioned that they released the two of something first and you knew that they were giving away the one as a reward. 
So you saw all the rewards, yeah. People who won them, which is good that people got to win them like right away. Um, but where I stand in general, I mean, if they hold it back for a specific reason and then they sell it, I don't know, on a better day and it goes for more money or something, like, okay, that's fine. But when it happens just like because of an error or a glitch, that's like, come on, just print them in order then. <laughs> I was looking at somebody recently that, yeah, the order's like all over the place for the early Premier League ones. I forget who the player is. I'd have to look it up. But uh, Surface pointed out here that they didn't even get remotely close to halfway for baseball. And you'd have to think that they're, I mean, the, the auction slowed considerably. That's a nice way to put it over the off season, which I think. So the, I feel like a lot of the uh, people who didn't play baseball this past season were like, I'm just going to buy in the off season when the prices go down. Because like we're used to seeing prices go down. <laughs> and then so we're like, turn the faucet off and nobody wanted to sell. Yeah, they're like, and oh, so nobody wants to play? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so it, like because of that, like we, we really don't have that many first edition MLB cards. Like we're not going to get remotely close. He was saying like 48 rare Aaron judges when they that's, could make a thousand insane. of them. Like that's crazy. It's insane. That is or insane. I guess, because I guess 500 was the max, right? Because they were going to do half oh, a season. Oh, sure. Yeah. I don't think they said that they would only do a half season for the Premier League. I'm pretty sure they didn't. And I think if the demand shows up, they'll mint them all. Sure. But also, if the demand shows up enough that they have to mint them all, I think we're all okay. Everyone's happy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I was going to go back about the collectible thing. Like, you have like had um, kind of a fo not necessarily a focus, but I think you play into the whole like people appreciate like one ofs or jersey mints or whatnot. Do you think we're going to like continue to see like those cards actually become more valuable, or are we still like a ways away from from people uh, looking for those specific mints? Yeah, what's interesting is I think what's <clears throat> I mean I, it's pretty much a fact that those special serial numbers have not yet. Like there's not a standard where it's like, Oh, those go for double whatever that scarcity is selling for. So that's not a thing yet. I think it's more like a fun thing that people just like to have. And it makes it more interesting and fun for them. Um, but like what does <clears throat> have actual value is the special editions we were talking about, like golden boy and your sunrise editions. Like, I mean, like I've, I'm having conversations with people on discord. I'm trying to get a, you know, to make up a player like a Musiala super rare. Like I don't have one and I want one. And sure, I can just like go buy a regular super rare from the market right now for an okay price. But I'm like, well, how about that golden boy one? <laughs> and I forget who owns it. And they're like, yeah, no, I'm never selling that. I'm like, God damn it. Like, okay, now I want it even more. So I think those, because it just visually pops more. And I heard you say this on the last episode about the serial numbers on the premier leagues. It's sad that they didn't do the NBA like bold on the shirt numbers. Maybe that the card like, was too busy already. I don't know, but that's the coolest thing in NBA. Completely agree. Like I think they do it for the one ofs too, but the, yeah. the, the, it's just such an easy way to like, say like this card is more important than others. Yeah. As opposed to like looking look at, at the me. card and you're just like, look at me. Sevens. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> these are the, the, those two numbers are, are the same. Sorry, Andy, what were you saying? I was just saying, look at me. You know, that's that's what the bold is saying. It's like, look here. Yeah, because when you play the, because then you want to flex when you play your lineup, and you know, YNWA every single lineup he has the one of, whatever, <laughs> right? And he has to go on Twitter and be like, hey, my lineup is one of. They're all number ones, and the rest of us like, oh yeah, okay, cool. Whereas if they all had the bold, and you were like scrolling through server data, you'd be like, oh shit. And that's why I want the Golden Boy ones, because like I want to win like a U two U twenty three like D three or D four, and there's just like all Golden Boys. Like imagine imagine <laughs> the drip on that, because that's the style. It's just like oh man. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. I think it was Basil who had a lineup, re an NBA lineup recently that was all Jersey Mints, and it was just like Ooh. like you just saw the five ones just like pop out, and I was like, that's really cool. Like that's. Yeah, somebody I, somebody had a lineup full of signature cards. I think it was actually Grimaldo. It was Grimaldo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, Grimaldo is an interesting one that he somehow signed up all of his teammates and then got them to send them his, their 
auto, your autograph cards. And yeah, he won it. <laughs> Although I don't think I don't think he won anything. I think he just was playing those lineups. Oh, okay, maybe it was. But it, I think there was somebody not on the team. Or maybe he didn't captain himself. Whatever it was, it, there was something like a little bit off on it. But that's what it was. He kept he captained uh, an, another Portuguese player, I think. Right. Like yeah, in a different game. But anyway, those are fine. Do you have any of the special? Or you had the? I believe you had the Stefan Fry one, right? You did. Uh, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, Stefan yeah. Fry signature. I think I had Caden Clark too. That was a really tough one to get. Actually, a, a, a friend help arranged it. He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm friends with him on Instagram. He DMs me. He's like, I'll get him to sell it to you. <laughs> I've had a few people like, hey, I'm in contact with so-and-so. Like, would you have any interest in getting the signature card? And I was like, oh, no. But yeah, I'm sure somebody would. Tony, Dude, who Tony was it like that with uh, JFR? Because he's, I don't know if he's friends with him or he has some kind of connection to him. And he was like, do you want his uh, signature card? And I was like, sure, why not? Let's do it. it can't <laughs> oh, be is that expensive. easy? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I think maybe a lot of people got hit up by Vanderport or somebody else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly who, right? Or no, it was um, it was Yari, Yari Versher. Yari, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, hey, you want your signature card? And I was like, yo, that's cool. I'm even talking to you. Sure, what's the price? And he was like, yeah, like 10 grand will be good. And I was like, bro, you don't know what's happening <laughs> in this market. He was like, you can afford it. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, did Yari ever end up selling that car, card? Probably. There's a few know, people who love it. I think signatures. Mark Alelli was talking to him. There were a few people, I think, that were sniffing around that card. I mean, yeah. surely there's a way to find out. Oh, yeah. No, quickly. Did he, oh, was it the new the new one for this season? Here he is. Il Fenomeno got it. Let's see how much. Oh, well, if you're on his page... It's not showing. Yeah, he traded it. It says he has three, but only two show up. Oh, that's silly. Well, that just means like there's a third one coming. uh, Or something. The 2022-23 one he traded for a Paul Lopez super rare and uh, Ekatike rare. Seems like a very random deal. Hmm. But I guess he got the card for free. So what does he care? Yeah, two guys that play. I don't know if he plays. That's a good question, too. Oh, yeah. You've got all the data. Come on. Yeah, he's got a lineup here. Oh, he's got an Mbappe. Mm, tough one this week. Damn. Oh, and Big Paul. Ooh, rough one. Rough week for uh, Yari Vasharan's SO5 lineups. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Were there... Who was, like, the player that was not on the platform, AJ, that oh. you were, like, really excited is now on because the Premier League is here? I- I think that's the the best part of all of this is like that there's really no more short prints, and and actually like overall I'll part? get back to your to your question, but like <clears throat> no, it makes it more fun and more fair, right? Like even even being somebody who's owned some of these short prints, it's like I'd rather see more people playing with Bruno Fernandez, you know, like that that's not or or Kevin De Bruyne, like I didn't even own one of those. I think I, I, think I bought a rare the other day now, but like yeah, it just it just got to be old. It's like this is stupid. Like why why are there seven of these? Um, so I think, and there's way more combinations now. I was talking to a few friends last night and like, it's no longer just, Hey, you need Kimmich to win champion. Like, Oh shit. Now there's all of a sudden like five midfielders who can score in that arena. And that changes the game completely because on the, on the, you know, one out of five weeks that Kimmich doesn't have a good game. Like those, those other four guys are probably going to have a, a decent game and, it's no longer just going to be, ah, Kimmich won, Kimmich won. So that's what I'm excited about. And that's why I'm buying so many cards is because, like, now you can play the matchups. And, right, instead of just being like, oh, I hope Bayern's playing someone shitty or middle of the table. Now it's like, oh, well, Newcastle's playing or Man City's playing, you know, freaking Southampton or whoever's at the bottom of the table. Yeah. So well, New- Newcastle at home against West Ham, I think, this weekend. So that's a beauty. You like that one? Calling it. I mean, if you, you get Newcastle guys, not right not with a West Ham stack. <laughs> 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 no, there's a reason I, that I bought a Pope and a and a Trippier, which you could do now. Like even even for even if you have a lot of money, sure you could have gone and gotten a short print Trippier or any of these short print guys, Kevin De Bruyne. But like that's annoying. Like I I don't want to pay a value that doesn't want to make that doesn't make sense. I think the the beauty of this all too is you know all of these 
elite cards. You have the Brunos, the KDBs. All of these are, well, the be- the beauty for people that don't own guys like Kamich, um, it's going to bring the price down of of Kamich a little bit because yep. there are alternatives. There used to be no alternative. If you wanted to play champion Europe, you had to own Kamich pretty much. I mean, mm-hmm. okay, I guess you don't have to own him, but you, you kind of needed him. And now there are other options. There's supply of other options. And um, I think that it's going to make some guys more attainable. And yeah. And it's bringing the prices down to a reasonable place where like, instead of you'd see like one, uh, you know, Bruno or Trippier traded a month, that's not a real price discovery. Right. right? And that was trading for like $3,000. And now it's like 1000. It's like, okay, that's the price that most people are going to pay. Cool. We got it. And it helps too. Now you have limiteds of a lot of these guys where they are traded a lot and it gives mm-hmm. you an idea of what the rares should, should be priced at. Also gives you the idea of what the super rare should be priced at. It's helpful across the board from a data perspective. Absolutely. I think one of my, one of my favorite short print things was that there were more De Bruyne rares than there were limiteds. Yeah. <laughs> that, that my, is the funny thing, thing is there. my, my dad plays as well and he, he had a, he, he only plays like limited. I think he's actually stepped up to rare recently, but he mostly plays limited and he had one of those Kevin De Bruyne limiteds. And he was like, hey, I'm, you know, this was like nine months ago. He was like, I think I'm going to sell it. You know, and he was like, I don't, I don't really need that one. I was like, dad, there's like three of them. I was like, why would you sell? But actually three months ago, I was like, I was like, I think the Premier League's probably coming. You should, you should probably sell that thing because then it yeah. went down like big time. <laughs> Thankfully, he did offload it. Yeah, I, I think there are, I think there were fewer than ten, if I remember. Yeah. I, I haven't looked back, but there are those six were the super national. Rare? Were those the national team ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, there. Are, uh, oh, five super rares. We're showing six, which means there's one out in there's the wild that market. hasn't been. Yeah. Uh, well, it's put on, on, it's on the market for this weekend. Or, uh, I think that one. They, should they be put a one. bunch of elite ones on for the weekend, which is kind of fun. Like Kevin they De Bruyne, should... Holland. Yeah. Oh, there. It is. Uh, Saka. Badia Chile, uh, Conte, they just put a turkey up. They, they put a bunch of pop cards on for the weekend. Of course they put a turkey up, but um, <laughs> let me see here. Yeah, they've got a ton of, like, it's just, it's. I still like, it's been what, like two days now? And it's still like pretty wild to see these types of cards like on so rare. Yeah. No, the quality is actually so good. Like, there's a few jerseys, depending on, I guess, the material. Like the Man U ones, I've noticed it. It seems a little bit on the West Ham. You can really see the wrinkles, and it just, like, looks so real. Like, right there on that Brandon Williams. It just looks yeah. awesome. Yeah. I, I swore that some of them actually have a light on the crest. Like, or oh. it's just, like, a little bit lighter, which, like, whether it's the, whether I'm just seeing it or... It's actually probably, there. probably just, a little like, Photoshop going on, maybe. Maybe I'm in for it though. Yeah, I I think the clubs were like really involved in this launch, right? I mean, I think the Premier League takes their brand very seriously. That's not a stretch to assume. So yeah. I think they had real people on their ends, like quality checking it. Hmm. These are all all the those ongoing auctions. Oh, my and it's just wild to see see how many super rare auctions are from the Premier League. Because it's like yeah. easy to tell which cards are not the Premier League ones because they just like you're just like, oh, what's wrong with that card? And you're like, oh, it's from Syria or wherever. I really don't like Man United, but those those cards do look really, really, really good. Right? The red on red is fun. Just pull up. Yeah, that's a card that I wouldn't mind owning right there. You even said to me before. I did, and that's a good good question, actually, to just like bring up to people is who would you rather own, Bruno or KDB? Well, Bruno for age. <laughs> if you're in, you know, longer term investment. Sure. Nobody thinks that way on so rare though, right? <laughs> yeah, longer term like L5? three game weeks or four game weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are we saying long term? I mean their scores are similar, I think, aren't they? Like like pretty much the- Thankfully, because we're we're playing well. Uh, back in the who even was it before Ragnick and Solshar days? God, it was a nightmare. Well, it's funny because like you can tell you when uh, Ronaldo left Man United on that score chart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a fun one. That's a fun one. 
Actually, AJ, I was going to ask you if there are any cards that you haven't gotten yet that you wanted, but you probably don't want to give that away. So I'm not, I'm not going to expect <laughs> Well, I'll just say yes. Uh, yes. Definitely yes. Or, or just of like different rarities kind of looking at. Um, might be worthwhile to mention like I'm, I'm really happy with the Premier League launch in a lot of ways. Although I think they screwed up some of the positions, you know? Like, why in the world is Saka a midfielder? Saka midfielder? Ugh. Horrible. Do you think it, that they just take that data from Opta and they're like, whatever you say, we're going to do it? Definitely. But then, Andrew, isn't that where you guys get your data from as well on positions? And, and if you pull up Saka's page, it's like, you guys have him as a striker for like the last 30 games and it says his main position is central striker. Yes. Yeah, so we... Like yeah, like Opta basically <laughs> has a has a single position for every player. And so we show that. That's what So Rare uses. That's what we show as like the player position. But then we actually use the actual positions that they've played to like determine like where oh. they play on the card. So I, I'll just uh I got you. It. So you're saying Opta could report Saka as a midfielder, but then you guys are smart enough to be like, well, he doesn't play there. Right. So like, exactly. So this like screen right here, like he has been playing center right striker or right attacking midfielder, but because this circle is bigger, that's where he plays more often. But then, Absolutely. yeah, this is like the opt to define position, but it's, yeah, I, that one is like, okay. I mean, literally like opt is defining him as a striker here more often than anything else, which is why we show exactly. him. That. But I feel like it's one of those where I, I don't know why, why so rare wouldn't just use it I mean, excuse me wouldn't just use their own because you would imagine that a Saka forward card is worth a lot more to people than a midfielder card it's three points higher on average it's a position that's hard to find quality in u23 forward so yeah i mean i bought the, the number one rare just because actually actually another thing i didn't like is like i woke up what was it monday when they launched and like they had already sold Man U cards. I was like, I it just woke up. <laughs> what is going on? What time did you wake up? Like 7 a.m. <laughs> and somebody was like, I mean, actually, thankfully, YWA, good friend, he messaged me. He's like, yo, this other guy's buying all your number one Man U. I was like, oh, shit. What do I do? I, I actually think that was the most surprising thing for me is that they didn't do one of those like announcements of an announcement. Like, hey, we've got something big coming. You might want to pay attention. It was just like a tweet and a post, to, a, a tweet and a video. And they were like, we've already sold 20 of them. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that's good. I mean, it's good that you didn't have to wait, but it was also like, damn. So, so I think that's what it was. Like once I like got my bearings and I opened my computer, like I saw Saka was there. I was like, oh, I was like, he's pretty good. I was like, wonder what I could get that for. I think he was the first rare sold, if I remember correctly. I yeah, that might have been too. That it was like yeah, when I looked at rares. Yeah, like, that's a good one to get. <laughs> it's fun. Did do you guys know? Did IAK get all of the limited uh, Man United? Was it one ofs? Yeah, Is that what yeah. he was trying to do. Yeah, okay. I know that there was a problem getting the last couple. I don't know if you want to speak to that at all, AJ. <laughs> Well, it's like I said, I woke up and then by the time I got my bearings like and realized what was happening, I was like, okay, well, let me try to get one. And then by that point, right, he had just had a few left to go. So he had to pay any price to get it. <laughs> and then he started doing it on the rares. And then I think he ran out of money. It was like pretty clear by his bidding pattern change and he sort of held back on a few. Yeah. I imagine getting all of the one of rare, limited and rares would have been pretty... My Pretty God, which, which makes it so much more insane that YNWA has it on the Liverpool collection. Rare, super rare, and unique, and and shirt numbers. Like it's the most absurd collection I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't think I even realized realize he, had he even had the, that. I don't think go I to his gallery and just scroll through, and like other than rewards or like random trades, I don't think he even has many of those. Like it is all one ups. Like one day he sort of mentioned that to me, and I scrolled through, and I was just like, "Holy shit, you already had a good collection!" But they're all they're all special numbers. Like he almost doesn't have any that aren't. Yeah, that's pretty wild. <laughs> but but he hasn't been active on the Premier League yet. I saw him buy, buy a couple little things. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. A couple pieces. 
Yeah. At a shopping I, list. So what's on your guys' shopping list? Looks like he bought the uh, Kane and Son one of tens. Ones of ten? One of no, whatever it is. Um, We're good. Maybe yeah, it's kind of fun to like buy some of those players who actually aren't that expensive on Sorare because like they may not score that well. Like like I saw like Pulisic's card go by and I was like, oh, that's going to be cheap. I would like that. <laughs> Never going to use it, but right. He was another one. Why is he a midfielder? Oh, that's just like horrible. like. Uh, and I realize this is not like he probably played more left back than midfield. <laughs> <laughs> But the fact that he was a midfielder and Aaron, Brendan Aronson was a forward, I was just like, what are we doing? Like, I realize they don't play for exactly the same, but like close enough. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that that that's me. Sense. Well, that's weird. You guys have him listed as a forward. He 16 midfield and oh, all of his, uh, all of his U S men's national team cards were forwards. Mm. Yeah. That you can't use. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Beautiful. Did you get into the national series cards at all, EJ? Um, I I kind of was doing it, but hang on, let me actually check. National series. I know I collected a few Americans. I don't think I got him though. Just like the day when they came out and everyone started figuring out what these custom series were, I did grab like a bunch of American, whatever they are, a diamond, like in the first twenty-five or something. Yeah, that, that was that was really fun though. Like how that was out of order, and it was just like random. Like anyone could just win one of those. They could win the one of two thousand. They definitely didn't mint all of those either. No, which is even more fun. <laughs> yeah, that they're random in that way. Like, isn't it like the Enzo Fernandez? Like they didn't mint his number one. And people were like, "I want it." <laughs> was it the one or the? shirt number i can't remember or their shirt number or something something like that it was something like that yeah did they um did they have a special like jersey mint thing on those no pretty sure they didn't i guess they realized it's just the americans who care about shirt numbers i guess all of the uh jersey mints pretty much would have been diamonds though at least right yeah the custom series which is kind yeah. of cool, I guess. Is that bad? Is what bad? Like, is it bad that they would be all the diamond ones? No, I think I think that's cool. At least they're special, a little special in some way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did they not do a messy one? I don't think they did a messy one. That seems... What do you mean, shirt number? Yeah. No. Oh, wow. I mean, then you know it was truly right. Looking at the page here, it goes from 9, nine to 11. Oh yeah, Mike Basson. Do we ever find out where the number ten Messi went? Has anyone checked like uh, Nicholas's account? Is it in there? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this isn't Top Shot, where the CEO like has the most valuable collection. Oh right, right, right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Although, yeah, I mean, I just can't imagine that would go down well. If everyone's like Nicholas, why are you outbidding us? <laughs> like, Do you actually? I don't know if I want to go down the road, but I'll ask it since we're here. Do you think it's okay that no one at so rare plays the game? No, it's, it's very silly. Like I get it. It makes sense. Right. Like as a policy, they're like, Hey, we want to be as safe as possible. Totally cool. Like smart, safe. But at the same time, just have employee accounts for especially the people who need to know how the game works. Right. Maybe like the legal people don't need to play or whatever. Like for the accountants, but the people designing the game, marketing stuff like that, they need to be playing the game and have them on the leaderboards, have them owning cards. But just like when they are in a prize position, it's just nulled out, right? That cannot be that hard on the back end. Say flag it as an employee account, and when they are on whatever place that would have won a card, take them out. I think the biggest. So I, I thought I've heard that they have like an internal game that they play, like amongst each other to like try yeah, to simulate. They've it. mentioned that. But so I don't know how it works, but it's not the I same would, when you're playing against thousands of people. And the but it's actually less about like how many people you're playing against. And I wonder if they're all like, hey, you all have a budget. Here it is. Whereas like in Sora, it's like the three of us have very different budgets. So right. like, we're competing very, very differently. And if you are going in to like a 
essentially like the practice game and everyone has the same budget, you're not replicating what we are all actually playing. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Or or doesn't even matter what your budget is. Ours is real money, right? It's like, this is my actual money I've been spending on your game. Yeah. That that is well for sure. Yeah. I don't know what the So yeah. So yeah, let them have real accounts and just flag it. Like have a special logo. And it's like, yo, it's an employee account. Don't worry, they're not gonna bump you on the prizes. They just want to see how it works. But then did you guys talk um on the, any of the last episodes about D2 being better or like the new and improved prizes? Or are you gonna do that with Sean? I didn't really want to talk about it because I just started playing D2 and I don't want more people to play. <laughs> Okay, we'll give you a few days buffer. <laughs> <laughs> no, although I did talk to Sean just before this, um, and he brought up like ask, basically asking you about like what you thought the about the D two changes because it did seem like for people who played Super Rare or you know, it seemed like a lot of the people who had the ability to play the Super Rare division D two well didn't because the re rewards were so bad yep. and they really seem to have stepped it up, which is amazing that they can do that while also having more competitions to give away more super rares. And yet here we are. So does this mean I'm going to have to start playing cap 220 instead, AJ? <laughs> no, I hope not. Um, I still think like if you're already in there, you, you're head and shoulders above like other people who might want to get in there. Uh, or I guess to what you're saying, like, here, I'll tell you, I brought it up because I think it's really interesting. Finally, after two and a half years of playing this game, like D2 is attractive. Up, up until last week, D2, just for, for what it is, for where my gallery is, that's like training lineups for me. I'm like, that is the lowest priority. I'd actually rather play D4 above D2. Um, no wonder you bought that Naka and Bruno ones. They were rares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, no, Sean told me about it the other day. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, there's no way. Like, oh, what did they do? A few more tier ones? He's like, no, you can win tier zeros in there now. I was like, what? <laughs> and like, he had to show me. He was like, right here, look what it says. And I was like, holy crap, this is like a massive announcement. And they didn't really frame it in that way, at least to me. But I'm glad they did it because it's Yeah, no, so and all star this, this weekend, there's two stars in there. And also they throw on a rare, uh, tier one rare, I think, at the podium. Yeah, well, even more, like All-Star, they sometimes had a tier zero, but yeah, it's two now. And then in the region, you can win one. So U23, D2, right? Like that's, you could have never won a star before. So, and it was only first place you could win a tier one, which would be like, okay, you hope it's something good, but like 99% chance you're not going to get first. So then you're getting a tier two or a tier three for playing a team that costs $50,000. <laughs> so. So is D2 basically the same prize pool up top, at least, as D1, minus the ETH? Yeah, it's pretty close to D1, yeah. And so now, now this is really good for the platform because like, whether you're somebody like me or you who might focus more on D2 now, that's going to take cards out of other lineups. So like, whereas before I would have been like, oh, D3, let me just put my like elite super rares in there or whatever. Now I'm like, oh, shit, well, let me put them in D2. So that makes my D3 a little bit weaker, which helps other people who are playing in D3. Really or matter. I just buy a lot more cards. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not really... It's not I think that's what's happening game. a lot, is people are just buying a lot more cards, which is good that's for a good thing the platform, too. I think, right? Yeah. In incentivize us, right? Like, even if I'm going to win it one or two times a year, like, at least give me something to shoot for. Yeah. Are we... I don't know. It, it's funny because we're like, yeah, people are buying more cards, but also it it seems that it's, I've heard a lot of people say it's been really hard selling cards recently. I think part of that is like you, people are like sitting on ETH because they had a feeling the Premier League was coming. It's like literally the worst kept secret so rare ever had. <laughs> but the, I, I, I think it'll be really interesting to see the non-Premier League card prices now, now that everybody can buy the Premier League ones. Because I think there's a reasonable, a reasonable path where people like continue to do it, even though like we're going to get more Premier League cards. But instead of people being like, "Oh, you know, the supply is up, so I don't have to buy as many," it's like there are going to be more people like, "Oh, now I can get Premier League cards. Let me just sell my Jupiler boys, and I'll come over to the Premier League." And 
if you're somebody who likes to win Premier League cards with cards from the Netherlands or Turkey, I think this is your time. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it makes the whole platform like more fair, more fun, more interesting. Like it really does. It's exciting. Uh, yeah, it's harder to sell. Um, but but like to those people who are like, I feel like on the other side of the selling, there was like people trying to just really gouge and be really greedy. And it's like, guys, this wasn't this is not twenty twenty one November when like you know random whales or sharks would show up and just like buy any card at any price, you know and. And I, you know, I feel bad for some people who maybe have a lot of their cards stuck in it, but even pretty like shrewd managers like Powell, I forget what the super rare was that sold. If it was, it wasn't trippier, but it was somebody good like that who had short printed and it went for like two or three ETH. And then like, he was the lowest on the market still at like six or seven. ETH. It's like, dude, that's never going to sell now. <laughs> like, I, it, The market's been reset. And I think that's a good thing o- overall. I think it actually was trippier. Um, yeah, that sounds right. Because I remember like, yeah, the auction closed at four, and I think the yeah the floor right now is six. Right. Like, nope. There's going to be another one for sale, or someone's going to win it and post it for the now new price, and that was the yeah. number one. So, do you think there's much premium say, well, on a one of ten? If you ask YNWA, yes, but <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. I think. With the premium, actually, depending on your strategy. If you're a collector, yes, but I don't think there's that many of those in the super rares. For me, where the premium is, is when it's a new card, right? So who, who, did, who did I buy a couple of these who were first timers on the platform? Oh, like literally first card on the platform. Yeah, so like Nick Pope, Rod- Rodri, sorry, well, not Polish on. Uh, I mean, I'm a bit of a homer here, but Ratford, uh, yeah. Grealish. So it's like, or like the Cancelo that went the other day, which I regret not bidding on, but. Well, the Sokka. Right? If it's. Yeah, Sokka is a like Sokka good example. Yeah. Well, his Super Rare hasn't sold yet. Oh, the Super Rare, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking, oh, sorry. I was talking about one of tens. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Um, one of tens because Super Rare is like, they only sell one of those like once a, less than once a month, right? Just yeah, based yeah, on yeah. like high level math. So, hey, if you get an elite card that you're the only one who has it, it's. That's helpful. Uh, on the rares, I think it's yeah. They can, that that can sell a one is going to be the shortest of short mints. <laughs> okay. Do you think Bayern and Sorare get their act together and they they make a, a Bayern version? I don't really remember them doing that after the transfer window. Like it seems oh, really? like it makes sense that they would do it, but like we've seen like Jao Felix's car, uh, page has him in a Chelsea shirt, but we don't have any. Jao Felix yeah. cards right now. So like, I'm not Probably sure because why. he's suspended. They just haven't started selling them. Right. Yeah. But there were like yeah. other, there were other examples of that, of guys who have been playing that we don't have the new cards yet. Hmm. Okay. So then does Bayern purchase Cancelo at the end of the season? That's another risk. Like if he just goes back to city and is back in pep roulette. Yeah. You get four good months out of him right now. Hopefully maybe. Yeah, it's a tricky one. That's why I didn't bid on it. Obviously, I know what he's capable of, and if it's a short print, that's better. But I, w- I think it was went for like what, like twelve thousand bucks. I don't know what dollars are anymore. Um... But by the way, I think in dollars now it's very weird. I think I was the one early in the platform that was like, "What are dollars? You guys are weird." ETH only. Yeah. And then everyone kind of went to that, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, okay, ETH only." And then like as I kind of restarted, I was like, "Wait, I'm putting dollars in. I would like to get dollars back." Okay, I'm going to think in dollars from now on. <laughs> I, I I've switched to do exactly what, what Laird does, is where, like with limiteds, I'll think in fiat, and then everything else I think in, in ETH. I don't That's know why. I don't know why that makes sense. I think the lower dollar values on the limiteds... Um, Make you feel helps good? It, helps it make sense? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have no, I have no oh, reason. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. $3.50 versus like 0. 0.0001 ETH. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I that had... I had that exact situation this morning when somebody countered uh, an offer that I made and asked for 0. 0.009. And I was like, I don't know how much. And then I was like, oh, 15 bucks. Huh. Okay. Like, as soon as they added the extra decimals, I was just like, there are too many <laughs> digits okay, behind so the, the decimals. Rare and super rare. Like, I don't know like, how much this is anymore. You're like, it's a two ETH card. Okay. So the decimals are the problem. 
Yeah. That, I think okay. that's, a, that's my problem, at least when I try to figure out what's going on. That's funny. So um, it, it's funny to me that how much you talk about the short mints though. And as somebody who has had like the Bruno Fernandez short, like, was he like the, the shortest of mints? Like there, there were not that many of them, right? Over how long he was a short print. It has right. to be. I mean, I'm sure there's other like random guys who don't really play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of people who score on the platform and can win you something, it's no question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there were, I think there were less than 10 rares, right? Does that make sense? Does that sound right? Yeah. I think it stopped at seven or eight. Seven was, shirt yeah, number was eight. It was. Seven. Yeah. And I think they got his shirt number. And then there was two super rares and I had one of those as well. And so Gwyn had the other one for a while. Who has the unique now? Who do you think? Come on now. <laughs> right. I wasn't going to let that go go to somebody random. Who's going to get the second unique? That's what I was just yeah. about to ask. Uh, I mean, that's even though I knew Premier League would have to come at some point, I still wanted the old unique. You know, even if Premier League came six months later, just because, like, I don't know who's going to get the next one, right? I needed to make sure I had one of them. <laughs> do, you, do you want the new unique? I mean, I like the picture better, of course, but... Would you, like... would you trade the the sporting uh, Bruno? Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't think whoever wins it will trade with me. I'll have to put in some ETH, I'm sure. Because huh. he'll have the higher... Well, I guess he won't have a higher... Mine will have a higher bonus percentage for a couple months. But I don't know. It depends what they get it for, too, right? I, I mean, th that's... It's it's a good like exercise to think about like is it more collectible because it's older uh, on the platform it's in his I don't know it, it's his rookie card basically on on so rare yeah or it's like I think a one rare the... card too like it's those you don't see a lot of the nineteen yeah. twenty cards anyway yep yeah yeah I checked one time using so rare data of course card finder great great feature. Um, for how many uniques there were from the 2018 season. And I think there were 25. Wow. And, and on my old a account, <laughs> he has a good bunch. I think he had five. And on my old account, I had five. And like Mamba or somebody else had like two or three. And I just like remember thinking like a year ago, I was like, wow. Like imagine if I ended up with all 25 of these, how cool that would be. Even though most of them are useless. I was like, somebody will think that's worth something one day. But... <laughs> The problem is you'd have to sell them like all together. Like right. they, buying a few of them doesn't really make that the collection that great. But you're right. Yeah. So I used to have the Ozzy men, the Chucky Vets, whatever his name is, Georgie. Um, I, I still it, have it's... Chicharito. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, he's useful. It's actually insane out of all these cards that he's useful. Just Yari he's still played. barely useful, but he has a future. And the fact yeah. that Memo Ochoa is still useful is insane. Mm -hmm. Like YNWA, click on that card. See how many ETHs he's won from that. It's got to oh, be God. disgusting. It's going to be painful to see. I, I think like uh, the other week, he like beat me in All-Star using Memo Ochoa when like there was like three unique goalkeepers that had a game. I'm like, how? This is wild. Oh, it's actually that. less, that's less insane than I thought, but it's still pretty insane. <laughs> yeah. 33 ETH of current price rewards. <laughs> and is that what 12, you pay? Like 12 ETH? 5 cents for the card? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and 12 ETH. 13. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you add those together? I didn't know that. I thought, I thought that was all encompassing number on the right. Which one? So the 33 is only the card value, and then you also have the 12.9? The it was the card value then, card value now, and then, yeah, ETH. Even but it says total value. Separate. Ooh, so this is a good question for you. So I've always assumed the far right column encompassed the ETH reward. I don't think so. Mm. Surely there's a way to figure this out. Yeah, if you just like minus <laughs> the card value, we should see. But anyways, that's that's a boring oh, wait, that's... show. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> so we're doing okay. that. Nobody wants to do that? No, no, I trust you. But yeah, there are... Oh, Trossard is now who play more. 
Yeah, I, I agree that owning all of them would be cool. I like these cards a lot. Yeah, how they were like black, but the the NBA uniques are the best with the purple. Oh my! The gosh. purple. Yeah. You think we're gonna get I think that? I agree. Exactly? Yeah. On the new season. No, I think that you're right that the NBA uniques are are the best. Like they look yeah. the best. But do you think do you think they're gonna do that in soccer on the oh. new design? Well, I mean they, they, they did like the goldish brownish looking uniques. I wonder if they how far they would uh you know wander yeah, those off. Were awful. Yeah. Brown ones. Those are the those are the worst cards on the entire platform. Like, <laughs> like brown <laughs> uniques. I don't know why any but like they were I always wonder like how many people looked at that card and they were like, yep, this is what we're going to make our most expensive cards look like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, that in the sunrise edition, but. Oh, oh. blasphemy. That's oh, surface mean, doesn't like the purple. Ooh, sorry, buddy. I'm just going to pull them up because just to like really rub it in on you. The funny thing is, is that Luis Suarez is the only player I know that has one. I know that there are others, but like Suarez is the only one I I think Jimmer Jimmer might. Uh, I think Morioka has one. Oh, there's a big this Tadic, Kim. I mean, oh man. Yeah, some top players. How could you not love these? I just what's going on there? Like what? what? It's the sunrise. It's the sunrise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I don't like that they made two of them. I probably like it more. It's kind of weird, one. and yeah, and it's not two some... of everyone though. That's the weird thing. There was some deal where they were giving one away to like a charity in Asia or something. Okay. I don't know if that ever happened. Wow. Like, why does Turkey have one? It's hard to follow up on those charitable donations. Huh? <laughs> Oof. <laughs> I don't... That's not the path I thought we were going. Um, to, to, <laughs> wander, to wander back on topic. Now, where do you think, where do you think we go from here? Like future wise, we have the, from there's no new league that we're going to add where it's like, Oh my God, we've, this is groundbreaking. This is going to change something. So we've hit the, we've hit the peak. We got the, we got the league that we've been waiting for, for three years, or four years, whatever. Um, they got the Saudi longer. league. Oh my God. <laughs> um, what, what's next? Is it just continue building, build out free to play? Um, does that matter? Do we care about free to play? What do you, what are you guys' thoughts on the future? Yeah, I, I think now that they have basically the most important league, it's it's what they've already signaled and are starting to do, which is to like redesign the gameplay, make it make it more engaging, make there more divisions, more ways for you to play, depending on your, your budget or what you're interested in. Um, basically making something for everyone now that they have all of the cards. And I think free to play is a big part of that. Right? Like I think I forget which one of you, but obviously Sean like is a big DFS player. Um, you know that like I, I'm the opposite there. I'm like oh like once a season I log in and dabble with like a hundred bucks, and then I'm like yeah this is not for me. But like when you know when there's promos or free to play, I'm like yeah I'll log in and do it. And like that's how you hook people. If you don't have that, you can't hook anyone. So free to play is super important. And then the other thing that would be really cool is multi sport events we've talked about this before but like do you have a lineup where you can put in like an mlb nba like a, a soccer player all in one week come on how epic is that have, have you ever dabbled in any of the uh like prop bets where it's like who will score more points tonight lebron james or um or tom brady's rushing yards or something like that yeah yeah i, I see a lot of the so rare audience on twitter like posting their when they make those bets, yeah, those are pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, you think they could do that in so rare? That would be epic. Once, I mean, let's get the let's get the gameplay we have now, like nailed down and perfect, and like no complaints. But that yeah, like cool. like that's what, the only way they're going to get baseball cards sold. <laughs> have, <laughs> like, have a hey, ha multi sport one, <laughs> or, or a tournament where it's like, what player will have the most uh, progressive passes this week? Some weird weird soccer stat that they happen to capture and everybody submits a guy and um i don't know there could be yeah. some stuff with that absolutely yeah everybody definitely wants to be cheering for progressive passes into the final <laughs> third or whatever how about how about guy that takes the most corners or something like that although I'm still can match yeah <laughs> i'm actually wondering if they really go all out and make 
Premier League specific limited rare and super rare competitions and unique. Mm. Like I think my first response when, or like reaction when they had the new like all these new gameplays and you're just like inundated with like so many contests. Like you have to scroll through so many now. But like if you only care about the Premier League and you really just don't care about the others. Like just give me like a Premier League lobby and like I can play common whatever we whatever they call it amateur limited pro limited rare super rare unique and like let me just keep my premier league cards with premier league cards and like that's it and i don't think like i think they do a really good job of pretending like the other big european leagues matter but they don't like no just not nearly enough people no i i don't <laughs> no, i didn't mean i didn't mean that but i'm just saying like there's there's not like the bundesliga like the league's official website, like has a fantasy game, but like not that many people play. Yeah. There's no like FPL equivalent for these other leagues because just not enough people care. And so I don't think it's necessarily like so rare's job to like make people care about other leagues. Obviously we do because of the way the game is played, but also we got really involved in other leagues because the premier league wasn't here. Well, I think that's, I think that is part of the sales pitch to the leagues and clubs is like, Hey, you're going to get new fans who hadn't heard of you before. So like, they're going to always have to keep that open. But yeah, I think once the demand is there, it'll definitely do Premier League only. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a matter of demand. And they'll do that. I was, it's funny, like everything you were just saying, because I was just listening to uh, the Gavin Jules podcast before this. And like, they were talking about the Chelsea transfer window and financial fair play and all this. And they were like, they were like, look, they were like all the teams under investigation for FFP right now, zero of them are, are English. They're like, they're actually all the other leagues, like Italian and Spanish um, and French, of course. And, uh, and then they said, you know, like, and then those, those clubs who bent us and all these guys are like, oh, we want, we want the Super League. Yeah, yeah, that'll give us more money and put us on even footing. It's like, sure, you're going to get more money, but like the English clubs are going to get more money too. And they're going to outspend you again and beat you again. And, and I say all of this because the bottom line was why English Premier League is so popular is because they literally speak English. That's it. He was like, English is the language of the world. It just is what it is. And most people speak it. And that's why it's popular. Like, it just, I'm sure, of course, there's American, you can watch an American broadcast of all the top five leagues. But it's, it's not the same, you know. Just, I guess historically been built up that way. I know, I know from like my perspective is uh, EPL so popular is because it's so accessible. I mean, the games since I was, you know, 10 years old or something have been on, you know, regular cable TV. And you can't say that about the other top five leagues. Right. Because they because they didn't have English broadcasting and and then that blocked them from doing commercial deals earlier on. Uh, now they have it now. Right. Bundesliga on ESPN and Syria and Paramount or whatever it's called. So it's pretty nice it. still today. You turn on your cable TV and you right. have USA or NBC playing Premier League. So it is what it is, and we have it. So it's great. <laughs> I mean, for a while, the Premier League was easier to watch than MLS here. Oh, my God. Well, hey, did you sign up? I already it's, signed up for my MLS it's, subscription, baby. It, it still is. There we go. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Still... <laughs> <laughs> like, when I tell my dad that he's going to have to uh, – to, to get an Apple TV subscription with Apple TV plus to watch our new St. Louis city soccer team. He's going to be like, his mind is going to be blown and I'm going to end up sharing a password with him, you know, to, to get him in to watch the games. <laughs> You're going to have to I log in. Every still, time they still have regional broadcast black. What's that? They, they still have the regional broadcast on linear TV. Oh, do they? Yeah. I thought yeah. it was all so moved over to. No, the Apple deal is just the streaming. Hmm. So like whatever channel you used to like the random MLS channel, you know, channel 49, like that'll still have your local game on there. Hmm. And then Fox and who's the other one? Like Fox will still have like the game of the week on linear TV. Okay. I find that stuff fascinating, but it's really good for the MLS, like how much money they're going to have now. Yeah. Actually, uh, uh, one of the European whales was just chatting me like yesterday or today and he was like, he was like, how come all the good players leave the MLS? <laughs> I was like, because they don't make shit. 
So they want to go to Europe. And he was like, yeah, but he's not going to start in Europe. I was like, doesn't matter. Makes 10 times more money. Like, don't, don't buy young MLS kids. Not even young. They, Matt Turner was like the perfect example. The guy like yeah. 10 x his salary to like yeah. back up and play care about cut matches. <laughs> uh, oh, um, Surface wants advice just going to bring that up. FC yeah. games. Um, dude, absolutely. Well, it's a great stadium. It was built brand new just for the team. Um, and they have really good seats, and they're not that crazy expensive. You can sit in the supporter section, which is – I mean, it's sold out every game. The supporter section is, like, nuts. I have some friends who have sat there. It's, like, 50 bucks. You're going to get soaked in beer. Um, <clears throat> or you can sit, like, the lower – other lower sections of the bowls. Like, the seats are really nice. They're, like, this mesh material, so, like, you don't get sweaty because it's super hot in Texas. Uh, and those are, like, 100 bucks, 150 maybe. And there's even like a club lounge with air conditioning. If you want to step up even more, they yeah, they've got some some good seats there. Sounds like Surface just needs to DM you guys, and you guys need to go to a game together. Yeah. Been to a few games with some so rare buddies. Surely so rare will be able to handle that. No, <laughs> I just buy them myself. It's just easier. Oh, man. oh you don't want to, you don't want to jump through those hoops. <laughs> I don't like jumping through hoops. I'm the guy who likes to pay more for like zero <laughs> effort. I'm sure there's a so rare joke in there somewhere, but mm -hmm. I won't touch it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the gallery says it all, actually. <laughs> yeah. What do I have to pay to have this card? Okay. Uh, before I let you go, there is a big NBA auction coming this Saturday. Do you have any interest in a Giannis Antetokounmpo unique? It's 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 bad timing for me. <laughs> <laughs> I believe somebody I was talking about it with, and they were like, "Do they do they think that people have unlimited money that you can like bring the Premier League and Giannis unique at the yeah. same time?" Yeah, it's a real shame because uh, like if Holland unique drops next week, we got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I mean, it's a great card. It's like really, to me, it's one of the first like top five elite NBA players that they've done the unique. Yeah. You know, they've done like Anthony Davis and Kyrie and a couple other like definitely really strong cards that people are doing well with. Oh man. No, like you can just tell I'm like indecisive about it. Before, let me just dive in. I know we tend to focus on football here, but just a quick NBA because you have gotten into NBA really really big like what what has been your response so far your like reaction to the nba product so far i before they launched premier league which i guess doesn't really change the product other than they have a license but when it came out i was like this is the best thing so has ever done like the game the capped mode like how it changes every week it's like shit i literally can't use this unique anymore like he doesn't fit in my lineup oh i gotta go out and like pay double on the market because i don't do my lineups until 30 minutes before the deadline <laughs> to fit somebody in i think it's genius like that's what it should be right and and it's fun because you don't just you don't just sit back have like five great uniques and hit enter every week you can't do that so i, I think it's fantastic obviously it trickles down to the other scarcities as well but it's oh, exasperated yeah. it's, it's brutal. on a unique level because <laughs> i'm the same oh, as you yeah. i do my i do my lineups right before deadline and sometimes Sometimes I'll I'll have something something really cooking, and it's like, all right, I got four guys. These guys all smash this game week, but I the fifth spot, I it's it's open, and I need to find somebody. So then you go and do that, and and we talked about it, we talked about it somewhere, and I, I think I even heard you, Laird and Gator guy, talking about it. But you you buy that fifth guy, and then you're like, well, I could improve this guy a little bit, and and just you keep tinkering, and and all it does is increases market activity. Um, which is yep. great for users because I'm buying, I'm not buying off of the auction market. I'm buying off of Laird, AJ, whoever else. Um, so they're getting sales. The liquidity is just, you know, the money's flowing. Yeah. And it makes the guys who have lower averages mean something. Right. Like those are the guys who actually sell for the most. Cause they're like, I need someone who has a nine average, but might score 20 this week. Yeah. <laughs> that was like one In of the soccer. You never think that, right? Like, yeah. you're like, I just need Kimmich. <laughs> Even when like, they had underdog and specialist and like we did see, it was always like the goalie who was like, you know, the 39 L15 for specialist. But like 
it was just like certain types of players and here they like yeah they've done like a really good job in nba of like not only making guys like that valuable but even guys who aren't good now you're just like maybe i'll hold on to this because he could be the other that guy next week and so yeah just makes you uh, go that much and, and we're already seeing it in soccer with joe lewis Wait, who? I don't know who that is. Is that that's because he's not good? Joe Lewis was the backup goalkeeper for Aberdeen with uh, an L fifteen of zero, and the starter got hurt, and Joe Lewis came in and gave up six goals to score two, and then <laughs> and then did it again the next game when his his L ten was two. Excuse me, when his L ten is L ten when his L fifteen was two the following game week he scored three. And then when his L15 oh was three, God. I believe he had a huge game this past week and scored like 32 because he only gave up two goals instead of six. And <laughs> then crap. and then they just got Jay Gorder, so he's going to be benched. It's one of so the... His graph is like this. It's a roller coaster. <laughs> so it's perfect. I guess. Uh, it's one Yeah, of that's what you graph. want in these games. Variance. It... <laughs> this is his <laughs> price. This is his limited oh, price. Oh, Lord. <laughs> This looks like Jal Felix's chart. Oh, boy. Ah. <laughs> Has he sold for 100 ETH yet? I know that, Jake. I, t- I was willing to go to 99, but now that he's back from suspension, everybody lost their, their discount. So sorry, guys. Sorry. Oh, he's Too back bad. this weekend? Is he back? I don't know. I, I haven't done my life. I don't think he I, is. No. Now with the new deadline, Andy, I've got tons of time before the deadline. To oh, figure new out. deadline. Oh, praise be. Let's go. Praise be. We got it, guys. Because we, we all got, got screwed out of Neymar. This yeah. last week, <laughs> we'll I, I love the people and who Jonathan like David, instantly, and, yeah, with the broken hand. Everyone who was like, "Oh, there's no news you'll ever get that'll help you." It's like, dude, are you joking me? It's every week something. <laughs> I I woke up, I used like four Neymar's this midweek. It's like, oh, my week's over. Cool. Is it Saturday yet? Like, horrible. But yeah, ready. I'm for here four deadline. Neymar's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I the same thing. <laughs> He should have smashed. That's all I'm saying. I wonder who we're talking to. That's all. <laughs> all right. I th- I because I have you here, I'm going to ask you this question, but then I promise we'll we'll let you go. The NBA product has this max bid offer. Oh yeah. As somebody who has bid quite significant amounts on certain cards, do you think that somebody will drop like a huge max bid? on this Giannis card as opposed to Ooh. just waiting until the, the auction actually happens on like finishes on Saturday. Oh, that's okay. So, so uh, separating it from the Giannis question, I love the feature from the day I joined July, 2020. I was like, wait, how do you not have this? Like eBay from 1995 has this feature. <laughs> um, I'm glad that they have it. I forgot it's only on NBA because my dad wanted to bid on a, soccer card in the middle of the night he was like what should i do i was like oh shit it's not on soccer yet sorry um i think it's a great feature it's good for the market and price discovery because i'm sure you've been over this i don't i don't need to harp on it uh in regards to the Giannis, yeah okay this this is really interesting so somebody you're saying could like this dimes for a day he's the only guy who bid on it right so like 50 ETH bid so if somebody else yeah put in like a 50 max 50 ETH max bid they would be the top bidder right now I mean, so I could try it right now. Let's just see. Like, so, oh, here we go. Set max bid. Okay, so I could just type in like, what do you think this goes for? Like six ETH. Like, <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> I'm gonna try it. If I'll just put like a reasonable not bid. Good for six ETH, we're all in. Bid. They should just close up shop on the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see if I get it, see if I get it cheap. Oh, you've been. Oh, look, it worked. Go pull so, it up. Oh, I don't even have. I it got up automatically out there. Anyway. So AJ put in a five ETH bid and dimes for days is immediately. What is the difference? It, it went up. I'm sorry. Is that 35, wow, 36 cents? That's weird. Oh my God. This is wild. So, okay. Well, that's not right. <laughs> so yeah, the that's bid bizarre. went from $531 and 78 cents. AJ bid five ETH, which was 8,513 spot 95. And the new bid is now high bid is five point zero 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 two ETH. So it doesn't adhere to whatever the percentage bid increase is, uh, like typically. Because if it, I go to bid on that, it card, doesn't appear to be. It's and, five point right, two. Yeah, dude. Wow. Okay. Well, you just found a new hack. 
Oh, yeah. That's how you can get the card for you. So they're incentivizing you to set your, what is it called? Like a reserve bid, right? Yeah. I would test it out, but I'm, I'm a little below five ETH. On the well, no, you're sharing your screen. You don't want to give away how much you have on the side. I guess. Yeah. I'm sure everybody really cares about my 10th of an ETH. <laughs> but anyway, so that's how it works. So that answered my question. Should we try again? Obviously there are other people who. Let's see how much this guy it. bid. This well, is how much ETH you want to have held until Saturday. A AJ just flexing right now. <laughs> no, but this is this is this is a good oh, you brought him, Andy. Oh, look what happens. Oh, uh, you should what? see my screen now. It's pretty cool. Why would it put you ahead though? Because I I bid I play like, here. I'll just well, I don't want it. To, doesn't really matter. It's not going to. Let's just say I put in seven point five ETH as the next max. Right, but wouldn't it put? Why wouldn't it just jump right up to that instead of putting? Oh, it's showing it's showing either. dimes for days max bid is what it's yeah. doing. Oh, that was the, that was their max bid. Yeah, and then it's still showing uh, AJ's current low bid, which I don't know why AJ's went up to six point six though. Right, like it didn't it didn't go to six point three five eight right. eight. <laughs> right, why know? was it not thirty six cents higher than? <laughs> yeah. Laird, can you can you cut this and uh, send it to the Sorare team and tell them, hey, I don't think this is working. <laughs> I don't think anyone's used it in this fashion yet, so I'm really glad you brought it up. Uh, but my screen is is quite interesting. You obviously we won't see it, but like I see what you see, and then I also have a, a strip above that that says, "Hey, your max bid seven point five. I oh, I can hit stop, and then I'll just oh. have my max bid at six point six right 6 .6, now. Six point six, right? Ah, interesting. Hmm. Dude, this is this is really cool. I hope it comes to soccer. Because then you can just like say, hey, this card's worth a thousand bucks to me. I'm going to bid that. Yeah. And that's it. I'll get it or I won't. I, I agree. And I know that I, I said that I liked it and Laird immediately said that um, I was wrong. <laughs> I said, I did I say you were wrong or that I disagreed? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As somebody who appreciates being able to get a, a late night auction past all the euros... And now that yeah. opportunity is gone. That's why I didn't like it. That's all. Hey, okay. it'll be called the good old days now. That's right. That's right. Back when we could get deals on these cards. Oh, anyway. well, back when the site used to crash, you know, during an important <laughs> unique auction and Zura would win it for like 10 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And then he conveniently started working for so rare. Hmm. <laughs> Weird how that works. Maybe he's a, been kidding. a spy the whole time. They did have yeah, employees. I'm playing just kidding. Game. Don't just don't anyway. Right. Anyway, AJ, thank you so much for joining us. This was a ton of fun. Um, it was really nice to get your perspective on a lot of things, especially since I argued that the Premier League coming was one of the biggest days in so rare history, if not like the biggest. So i um, excited to uh, celebrate that with you and see some of the stuff that you've uh, put out. So thank you to everybody who has joined us in the chat. If you guys could hit the like button, it's always really uh, appreciated. Obviously, as always, more people are currently watching than have liked the video. And I can't imagine that you are an hour and 13 minutes in and not liking it. So just like the video. Simple as that. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. So anyway, AJ, thank you again. And uh, Absolutely. good luck with this max bid feature. <laughs> Thanks.